So recently I made a video all about games based on movies, but I thought it'd be fun to talk about some based on TV shows. Let's get on with it. First up we have The Young Ones, which is based on the early 80s TV show starring Rick Mail and Adrian Edmondson. This game came out way back in 1986 on a few platforms, the one you're seeing here being the ZX Spectrum. Now if you've seen the show, you'll know how utterly bonkers and surreal it could be. Basically it's about a group of students living together, getting up to pretty much anything other than, well, work. Which pretty much sums up my uni days, just with less violence and talking hamsters. How does he think I feel? Stinking like a student's armpit. Anyway, in this game, you start out by choosing one of the young ones, either Mike, Vivian, Neil, or Rick, and they kind of resemble the characters as much as they can on an 8-bit system. Vivian has a spiky punk hairstyle, Neil has long hair, Rick has that little plait, and Mike well, he's just the other one. After selecting our character, the objective is to leave the house, but before you do so, you have to collect all of your belongings. Now, the issue there is that each character has different items, so you sort of have to know the character from the show, plus the other characters can pick up your items too, so you'll have to fetch them back, which can get really frustrating. You've always got a view of two floors of the house, and so seeing everybody walking around, picking things up, and talking with these huge speech bubbles can get a bit chaotic at times, but I think that chaos is not out place with the nature of the TV show. Overall, the main issue I have with this game is that you can't freely walk around. You have to select actions from a menu. So to walk to a location, for example, you have to select walk and then choose that location. This makes the whole thing a bit tedious in the long run for me, but if you can get past that and you are a fan of the show, I do think this is worth checking out. Next up, we have Sesame Street Countdown for the NES. Now, this feature is just one character from the children's educational TV series, and that character, as you might have guessed, is the Count. In Sesame Street, the Count is basically responsible for teaching kids about numbers. There's no blood sucking or avoiding sunlight, so why is he called the Count? I am the Count. They call me the Count because I love to count things. That's why. So in this game, playing as the Count, you start off each stage by spinning a wheel of numbers. Once a number has been selected, you have to look for anything in the stage that equals that number, and that number can literally just be floating in the air or appear as a batch of items equal to it. You have to collect this number a bunch of times before you can continue on to the next stage, but if you somehow manage to get a lot of these wrong, you'll have to start again. You can also collect lightning bolts that will give you one of these numbers for some reason. If that's not enough of a draw, you can also find balloons in the stage which will take you to mini games that grant you a number as a reward for your collection. Now I say game lightly here as they tend to be a super simple maths or pattern recognition problem. Remember, this is for kids. A couple of things I quite like about this game is that the count looks really good and he animates well. I love the fact he can look up which might sound really silly to say but many characters in games don't bother having this state. Also I'm pretty impressed with his amazingly clear digitized speech. You'll hear him call out the numbers as well as his memorable laugh throughout the game, and it's absolutely charming. So overall, it is a kid's game, so it's super simple, but if you're a big kid like me, you might want to check it out just for the nostalgia and the ha ha ha's. Next up we have Home Improvement Power Tool Pursuit for the SNES. This is a platformer based off the TV show Home Improvement. Well, kinda. I mean, did the show have dinosaurs? <laughs> anyway, you are Tim Toolman Taylor, notably played by Tim Allen in the show. Upon looking this up, I was shocked to find out that this show ran for eight seasons. Eight years? If you don't know it, it basically centers around a guy who wrestles with hosting a home improvements TV show and a family. It was a decent show. I watched a lot of it, just not eight years of it. Anyway, in the game as Tim, you're tasked to go in search of some missing power tools. He has to go through numerous different TV sets to retrieve them, starting with a pre historic one with dinosaurs. I mean, Jurassic Park was all the rage the year before, but it's still a weird crossover. It's a decent enough platformer and there's some fun weapons in the form of power tools that you'll come across. I was getting Alien 3 vibes with the flamethrower. Plus, Tim looks great. He animates well and sort of looks like Tim Allen, which is obviously a plus. I do take issue with the jumping sound, as you'll constantly hear the boom sound, which will eventually tear your soul apart. But I suppose it's better than if they use this sound. Overall, it's it's okay, I guess, just not one for me. It's definitely an oddity. I mean, I can't even imagine fans of the show being excited by this one, but what would actually make a good home improvement game? Answers in the comments. 
Next up we have Benny Hill's Madcap Chase for the ZX Spectrum. It's loosely based on the Benny Hill show which ran from 1969 to 1989. And in this game you of course play as Benny Hill. The show consisted of comedy sketches and mostly innuendo from what I can remember anyway. I mean, when I think of Benny Hill, the first thing that popped into my head is him being chased by scantily clad women, which leads us onto the game. In the game, as Benny, who looks great, although very Simpsons-like, I do like his little red berry, you have opted to help his neighbour out by bringing in her washing. On the way to the washing line, you must navigate through different obstacles, which basically involves you moving up or down past objects in the fore or background. If anybody spots you with the washing, they'll chase you just like the show. But in this scenario, if they catch you, they'll jump up and down on you and the item will be returned. The issue here is that Benny is on a timer, so you have to be quick. The other stages in the game are similar, basically just collecting and returning items without getting caught. Now, if this style looks familiar, it's because the game was actually programmed by the same guy who made Popeye and Trapdoor, games which also had huge character sprites. And I think it looked great as the style really stands out. I actually quite like the movement of Benny in this too. His little run does make me laugh. So again, it's obviously a no-brainer for Benny Hill fans, but I'd also say it's worth checking out as it's quite a fun little game. Last and certainly least, we have ALF, the Sega Master System. This game is based on a TV show of the same name, and in that show, which stands for Alien Lifeform, it's about an alien who crash lands on Earth and is taken in by an American family. It was a show I quite liked growing up, although I don't remember seeing it that much. I just had a fondness for the character as he always made jokes about partying and eating cats. In the game, you of course play as Alf and your objective is to find parts of your spaceship so you can jet off to meet your girlfriend. It's as simple as that, but oh my word, I wish it was that simple. You start off aimlessly wandering around, being constantly chased by a man I could only describe as Grabby Allen while playing through this on my Twitch stream. Yes, you hear that right, I have actually finished this game. Anyway, if Allen touches you, you die. You get hit by a car or a cyclist, you die. Eventually, you'll reach a basement with a giant rat running around, and if you touch it, guess what? You die. You need to pick up a cat first to scare away the rat, which makes no sense to me because if you know the show, Alf eats cats. But, you know, whatever. Getting by the giant rat will bring you to a section I really need to talk about right now, and that's the cave. Here, it's your job to guide Alf through the cave past the bats that are impossible to kill unless you picked up some salami first. Yeah, you heard me. But yeah, even then, the bats are incredibly tough to kill. Anyway, it's almost impossible, and if you play this game on a dare, let's say, You'll spend most of your time here because when you eventually do it, you've got to do it again, but even longer next time. So what I'm saying here, if you haven't got the vibe yet, is this is not a recommendation. Do not play ALF, and that's it. Let me know in the comments of any other TV-related video games you want to talk about. And until next time, watch one of these videos. Go on.